Good evening. Tonight I want to talk with everybody about cultural differences. Some of you may know that there are some vast cultural differences between the United States and Southeast Asia where I live currently. I first took note of this when I moved to Thailand last year. One of the first things I noticed that the Thais do is they why each other whenever they greet, when they say goodbye, when they say thank you, or I'm sorry. That they do that because Thailand is a predominantly Buddhist country and that's a sign of respect. When they say hello or goodbye, they'll say Sawati Kap if you're a man or Sawati Ka if you're a woman. When they say thank you and you're welcome, they'll say Kakun Kap if you're a man or Kakun Ka if you're a woman. Now some of you may think it's strange that they use the same words to say hello and goodbye but it's no different than the Hawaiians saying aloha. After a while, you catch on and you start to understand the context. Another thing you don't ever do in Thailand is point your foot at somebody because that's considered the dirtiest part of your body over there. And you never ever touch anybody on their head because that's the holiest part of your body. If you really think about it, it's tantamount to the way Buddha works, Buddhism works. The closer part of your body towards nirvana is the most sacred part. So that being said, I have heard of some instances in school bullying where the bully would rub one's foot on his victim's head. I've never seen that personally, but I've heard of cases like that. Another thing you never do in Thailand is talk badly about the royal family or you'll get thrown in jail or prison. But that being said, I got so accustomed to that that I kept on. I came back to the United States and just got into the habit of lying people. When I first came back to America in March, I went to eat at an Indian restaurant. I lied the waitress who brought out the food. She didn't think that was so strange because she was Indian. Indian people do that as well. But the part that she found strange was when I said Kapun Kap, which means thank you in Thai if you're a man. I had gotten so used to whying people that I've done it a few times in Vietnam. The Vietnamese find that strange. But the reason why they don't do that is because Vietnam isn't a predominantly Buddhist country like Thailand. However, there are some other idiosyncrasies I've seen when I came to Vietnam. One thing they do, children or younger people, when they hand something over to the elder people, they'll hand them over with two hands, like this. That's considered polite. It's along the same lines as in Thailand, whenever somebody wants to hand something over to one of the Buddhist monks. It's forbidden for a woman to come in contact in any way, shape, or form with the monks. Therefore, she must set whatever she wants to give him on the ground so that the Buddhist monk can pick it up. Some of you may think this is strange or unorthodox, but it's no more irrational than some things that some American people do. Why I'm talking about this is simple. Because learning all these cultural traits is the same thing I've had to do all my life living with Asperger's, having to adapt to society and to pass as a neurotypical. I had to adapt and overcome. Neurotypical is the word we in the autism community, community use to describe people that are on the spectrum. I had to learn nonverbal communication and ways to ways to communicate with other people and to exhibit my emotions in a mature way. I couldn't have meltdowns in certain areas or I would get busted for it. That was the hardest part of me living in Thailand was controlling my temper because the Thai have a thing called losing face. Whenever I got overstimulated, I would have a meltdown. So I had to find some place private to do that. It's like that in Vietnam. Anger doesn't go over very well in Southeast Asia. So, another thing you never do in Vietnam is compare somebody to an animal. Not a dog, not a cat, not a duck, 
or a horse, cow, pig, or any other animal because that's considered an extreme insult. We may not think of it as a big deal in the United States, but it is a ginormous deal in this part of the world. I've had to learn all these traits and all these customs if I want to ever succeed in this part of the world. If only other people in the United States had told me straight up what I should and shouldn't do, things would have been a lot easier, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, sometimes we must always learn what we need to know by trial and error. So, the people with autism on the spectrum having to live in a predominantly neurotypical world is tantamount to a Westerner such as myself living in a foreign country like Thailand or Vietnam where there is a language barrier. We have to learn to adapt and overcome. But I don't think of it as an imposition because my philosophy is what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and struggle creates strength. In the end, we all become more well-rounded individuals and more versatile in our capabilities. So that's all I wanted to share with everybody today. I hope you found this video informative and I will keep everybody apprised. Thank you.